Hello my friends and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be running you through the skill stack that I believe is required for a social media marketing agency to achieve success. So if you run an SMA or if you run an info business like an online coaching business, I'm going to run you through what I believe to be the skill stack that is required to get to $100,000 a month. So I'm counting as success as 100 grand a month. I'm able to tell you which skills are required because I've been there and done that for multiple businesses. I got my agency Northflow Consulting to 100k a month and um, I now run Imperium Acquisition, near enough an eight-figure coaching company. I thought it might be useful because all you really have to do is define what skills are required by the business for you to develop, develop them, apply them, get really good at them and then give it enough time and um, lo and behold you'll be at 100 grand a month. So without further ado, this video should help you, you know, know what to focus on. Let's get started. All right, so the skills required to do this, um, in my opinion, fall into three different categories. We've got A, we've got R, we've got O. As we go through this video, it will transpire as to what those letters mean. But to begin with, we'll start with A, okay? So the first um, group of skills, right, group number one is acquisition. But acquisition is basically the your ability to persuade people in your niche to part with their money and their time for your gain. That's really what acquisition is. The skill can be summarized by that ability. And what I want to do here is basically break down specifically what skills you need and so you can understand at which stage of the way what you need to work on, if that makes sense. So acquisition works in a chain. <clears throat> it's basically getting people to do certain actions at certain points to funnel them through to obviously make cash. So the first skill for acquisition, right, and I'll put a bullet point here, is, um, is lead sourcing. This isn't as much of a skill as it is a task, but you know, there's, it's a skill that you have to acquire, right? You have to learn how to find people who are qualified to buy your stuff online. And you have to learn how to gather their information in an efficient manner, maintaining quality, but also being able to keep some quantity there. That's the first thing. It's the, it's the number one first thing you have to learn how to do if you want to build a successful agency is learn how to lead source. And most people fall at the first hurdle. They're like, oh, I, just, I can't find the leads. And it's like, how long have you been trying to find the leads? Well, oh, like two days, I can't find them. It's a skill, right? And like any other skill, it requires some time to develop. It's not a hard one to learn. I'd, I'd give this one probably like a two out of 10 in terms of difficulty rating on what to learn, on how to learn it. I will give each one a rating so you can sort of understand what might be more difficult. So the next skill I'm gonna, this is like a weird one, but I'm gonna call this eliciting attention. We're going to rank this one probably a 6 out of 10 in difficulty level. So eliciting attention basically means you've got the leads, right? You've got the you've got the skill to source the leads. Now you need to elicit attention from those leads and craft an offer. So eliciting attention really like the other skill required at this point is is offer offer crafting. And if you're wondering like how do you define crafting an offer? It's creating a compelling, cohesive sales argument that gives someone a compelling reason for them to actually schedule a call or to talk to you or even look at your thing in the first place. I'm gonna give the offer crafting a seven out of 10 in difficulty and the eliciting attention a six out of 10. Most of the time crafting the offer is mainly eliciting the attention, but eliciting attention, I can give you some examples of what this means. This is getting positive replies um, through cold email or, or people like opening your DMs or Basically, in human beings taking action to demonstrate that they are interested in your offer and your service. This is the next step. Now, following on from this is the actual booking of the appointments. Now, <clears throat> make no mistake, there's a stark contrast and difference between eliciting attention and booking an appointment. Eliciting attention means getting someone to actually put their eyeballs on your thing and feel in some way, shape or form compelled to act on it. And that action can come in the form of a positive reply. It can come in the form of them reaching out to you, whatever. The actual booking of the appointment is a different skill because appointment booking, getting a positive reply is one thing, but getting an appointment is another thing. They're, they're two different skills because appointment booking is about your, your skill and your ability to craft clever follow-up messages and be consistent with those follow-ups. So if I send you an email and say, hey, this is my offer, what do you think, right? And you then reply, say, hey, actually, that sounds really interesting. I've got a couple of questions. How does this work? How does this work? It is then a skill to reply to that person in a clever way and then to follow up on them consistently in a clever way without pissing them off to get them to schedule the call. Two different skills. Getting positive replies, skill number one. Getting appointments, skill number two. Because there's a gap between these two points. 
where you have to draft a clever reply to the person's response. Or if you're on a cold call, for example, maybe you elicit their attention and you get them to say, all right, tell me how it works. Like, I'm a little bit interested, but how does this work? It requires skill, right? Maybe you have to handle an objection or two or like answer some questions. So that's the next step. And once again, I'm gonna give this one <clears throat> probably like a, a six out of 10. You know, it's, it's not easy to learn how to do this, but there are frameworks that you can follow. Like we teach them in our program, for example. So it's not case by case, you know, like it's very, this, these skills are very universal, right? If one person asks you one question, then you can usually apply something else. After appointment booking, we have the show skill. This is a simple one, probably about a three, uh, we can give it, maybe give it a four out of 10, I suppose. And this is a skill simply revolving around your ability to get people to actually show up for the appointments they've booked. In fact, you know what? I'm literally gonna give this like a three. It doesn't deserve a four, because it's common sense. Like you just, if someone books a call, you add them on LinkedIn, you add them on Facebook, you follow them on Instagram, you call them, you send them WhatsApp messages, you, you send reminders, you send social proof, you send emails, you just bombard them until they, once they've booked the call in an effective way. Three to four, not too difficult. Most people just do show up anyway because they're people of their word, you're working with business owners, it's fine. Now, here we can break, break the skill into sales. I'm gonna put sales here and then I'm gonna break this down into some sub skills. Sales is an interesting skill because it's, in my opinion, realistically, it's made up of three individual skills. And I'm gonna give this a nine out of 10 because to get good at sales is very difficult <laughs> because it requires so much practice. But what sales realistically does is it actually splits into three sub skills that you need to develop because people are just like, oh yeah, I'm a good salesperson. There's three, there's three things as a trifecta, as a trident of, of skills in sales. And if you're not good at one of them, then you're not gonna close. The first one is your ability to question and listen. So that's the first skill, your ability to ask difficult questions and genuinely listen to what people say. Not interrupting them, not adding anything onto their answers, just following a strict line of questioning and being disciplined with it. Asking every question and deeply listening to the people's answers and taking notes. This skill, I'm gonna give it a seven. So that's skill number one for sales. Skill number two is your ability to pitch. This is basically the skill of pitching someone, of going to them and saying like, you know, you do the questions and then you say, you say, Mr. Prospect, you are so perfect for me. I don't wanna to get too romantic with you, but I'm gonna change your life and your business. And I have never been so excited to pitch someone in my life. And I have so much conviction this is gonna work for you. So can I explain how it works? Oh. Okay, well listen, like, before I get too excited, let's keep it business-like and then we'll get into you, you, That's That's what I'm saying, right? That's the start of a pitch. You're, you're warming them up and you need to be like, you know, fucking full of conviction, like decent pace. Um, you need to know your stuff, you need to be concise. A lot of stuff goes into building a great pitch and I might make another video on this. In fact, I probably will. But the pitch, I'm gonna give a seven out of 10 because a, a pitch really comes down to two things and if you get those two things right you're going to be good it is um conviction and cons i'm not going to type that basically the skill of pitching comes into two things conciseness and conviction conciseness times conviction equals success okay the less you say and the more confidence you have in those words the more impact but when you marry conciseness with conviction you become fucking lethal because if you say fewer words First of all, the less you say, the more impact those words have. But if you choose impactful words and you say them in an impactful way, you amplify the conviction in the prospect. If you have like a 25 minute pitch, it, you all of your words lose um, meaning. But if you have a one minute pitch, they will listen to everything. So the final skill is objection handling. This is the final skill required and I'm gonna give this a 10 out of 10. This is the hardest skill for, to learn in terms of acquisition. It's harder than learning how to pitch because anyone can sit there and, and say how great they are for 90 seconds. Pretty much anyone can ask questions and listen, but what a lot of people struggle with is objection handling. I, I could make a video on this. Uh, I mean, I've made videos on objection handling before, but objection handling comes down your ability to empathize, think on your feet, persuade, persist. There's so much that goes into this. It is by far the hardest skill for acquisition, right? And probably I would argue the hardest skill for building an agency in general. It, trust me, if you, look, if you know how to handle objections, everything else gets very simple. So in, in short, from an acquisition perspective, right, these are the skills required to build 
a, in my opinion, a hundred grand a month agency or coaching business. So start with lead sourcing, um, then a listing attention, crafting offer, appointment booking, shows, sales, right? This is all important. And then we know sales breaks down into these three categories. So this is the sort of first principle of, of sales. So those are the skills for acquisition. There's actually two more I'm gonna add, emotional management and data management. By data management, I mean, like data management is your ability to read data and make rational scientific decision, decisions in accordance with numbers. Emotional management is your ability to manage the oscillation of doubt, where you go from feeling really confident to really doubtful and managing the anxiety or anger or stress or any, any emotions that come as a result of trying to acquire clients. I'm gonna collect these into, into one skill, really, because they come down to the same thing. If you can learn to regulate your decisions with data as opposed to emotion, you become 10 times more dangerous than any of your competition. So I'm actually gonna give this, this probably like an eight out of 10, because the thing is with this, learning how to manage your emotions does take some time, learning how to make metric-based decisions takes time, but if you can learn to do that, then everything gets easier. So really, it's emotional management, it's data management, and it's also, I'm gonna put here, scientific thinking. And these all come into the same category. We're gonna give them an eight out of 10. So that's the acquisition thing, right? That's could have been a video in and of itself. So next up, we have the R. Obviously, there's a lot of skills, man. <laughs> you know, and there's probably more than this from an acquisition perspective. Um, you know, you've got another one right down here, which is content, the skill of the skill of content. And this, this alone, this can be like an eight out of 10. If you're doing video form, if you're doing written form, it's more like a five out of 10. It's not really too difficult to learn. You could, you could argue like hiring and stuff, but that's gonna come in later on. Here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. We're really, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, roughly 13. There's probably more like 15 to 20 that I just can't think of right now. But if you nail these and you really actually spend time developing these skills and working on them and, and, and practicing them every day, then the better you get at these, the better your business, business can acquire customers. Like when you have a bottleneck in your company, you're fundamentally being bottlenecked by your ability to solve a problem. So it's actually, and I mean this without the meme, it's a skill issue. <laughs> right? If you're not making enough money, it's a skill issue. And that truly is exactly how it works. So just bear that in mind. Right, let's go into the R. So this is an important one. This is retention. Because if you look at an agency, not so much for a coaching business, but the same principle applies. This is basically um, results. Right, so we can call it results, we can call it retention. We're just gonna go with retention because it, it sounds like a better way. Now, this isn't really my bag. Obviously, my bag is more acquisition than anything else. So I'm gonna try my best to sort of remember and think through things. Once again, um, retention, the first thing about this is, is obviously delivering results for clients. The first thing is, once again, data slash emotions, right? Your emotional management, because you're building systems, same thing. And this, once again, sits at an eight out of 10, right? Your ability to manage your emotions when you start a campaign for a client and four days in, you've got no leads. Instead of panicking and freaking the fuck out and stressing and changing a bunch of shit and just completely ruining Ceteris Paribus, which means all variables stay the same as everyone, one, you go back, you look at the data, you, you stay calm, collected, you have a spreadsheet with everything, you identify the bottleneck, you fix the problem. Stage one, I would say, is onboarding. Right, so we're gonna onboarding. So we've got client onboarding. Now client onboarding it doesn't, it's like more of a system than it is a skill, but your ability to create a good onboarding process and create a good set of initial conditions for your customer's experience. I'm just gonna give this a four out of 10. It really isn't difficult to make. The problem people, most people have with onboarding systems is they make them way too complicated, right? They build these fancy fucking 20 page funnels and then about us and then everything. And it's just, it's just too much. So after onboarding, um, I'm actually gonna put support here. Right, your ability and your the skill you have of supporting clients, um, and I don't mean supporting clients by getting them good results. I mean like how good are you at dealing with frustrated people? What's your email etiquette like? How quickly do you respond to people? What systems do you have in place to support your clients? How good are you at it? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. This is a three out of ten. It doesn't require much, and I can tell you why. It's because anyone can get a job in customer support, and if you've got a little bit of empathy, you're going to be good. Where it gets a little bit spicier is. Let's imagine, so I'm gonna look at this from the perspective of you running a marketing agency. This is where they're, they're, we, we fall short of the coaching example because coaching, 
skills are so varied because it depends on like who you're teaching and stuff. So I generally can't make an evergreen video on that, but let's get into the advertising stuff. Let's say you're doing Facebook ads or YouTube ads or some sort of advertising or some sort of business growth, right? Now comes the ability to write copy. And we're also gonna put creative, creative generation, right? I.e. like, I don't know, using fucking Photoshop or whatever kids use these days, right? <laughs> I'm such a boomer, man. So we've got copywriting, we've got creative generation. I'm gonna, once again, bulk these into two, and I'm gonna put this skill at probably like a seven out of 10. We've also got offer building, once again, because this is a skill you're gonna have to develop, like, because you're building offers for your clients, it doesn't stop at your acquisition. Here's the truth, if you can acquire clients, you should be able to deliver results, because the same principles apply, if you're doing marketing. Once again, offer building, we're gonna, what do we put over here? We put like a seven out of 10, yeah. If you've done it for yourself and you've used it to get a client, you should be fine. Then it comes down to what I'm just going to put here is tech. If you're running Facebook ads, for example, how well do you know Facebook's business manager? If you're running um, Google ads, for example, how well do you know Google Analytics? Every piece of tech that you're using to deliver results, how well do you know it? Do you know it inside out? Are you creative with it? Can you use it properly? This is, you know, I'm just gonna play a tech skills. For example, <clears throat> if you're doing Facebook ads, do you know what a custom conversion is? And do you know how to embed them? Do you know how to use Google Tag Manager? It just things like that. I'm gonna put tech skills at eight because this is where a lot of people really fall short. If you can get the creative stuff right and the tech stuff right, then you're gonna be great. But the problem is, is people fall into this binary, stupid polarization of thinking they're either a creative person or a tech person. If you want to run a successful company, I'm sorry, mate, but you gotta be both, all right? The next thing um, is nurturing. So nurturing is the skill required to convert a lead into an appointment into a show. So it's similar to acquisition here, where we've got um, a listing attention, appointment booking and shows, but nurturing for your clients is a different ball game. If you generate a ton of leads for your client and the leads aren't showing up or the leads aren't booking appointments, then it's up to you to solve that problem. And people say, oh, my clients just didn't call the leads. Well, you should be calling the leads, right? Nurturing is a good skill. This is probably, once again, like a, I'm gonna give it an eight. It takes a lot of time to learn how to do it, man. And, and if you want to learn how to do it quickly, there's a video on my channel called How to Deliver a Paper Appointment Offer and for SMA. It's like a 25 minute video of, of my business partner, Bo, explaining our nurturing process. So you can, you can learn this skill in 25 minutes. But generally speaking, like, if you, if you understand the technical stuff, uh, it comes down to these three things, really. If you know the tech, if you're very creative, you're good at supporting clients. Generally speaking, you're gonna be pretty good, all right, at retaining clients. So yeah, there's probably, once again, more skills in this, um, like the appointment booking thing or funnel building is probably another one. But we're gonna put funnels here. You need to know how to build funnels. Um, I would put like email marketing, but it's just copywriting inside of a software, so it's not that deep. Funnels, we'll just give it like a seven out of 10, because it's not the most intuitive thing to build, especially if you're new to it, right? Take some time to learn the softwares, to learn the tactics, et cetera, et cetera. So that is retention. Skills required for retention. And you can see guys, this is like, you can see how this is starting to build up a little bit. This SMMA model that people have fucking sold you where um, you think that like, oh, just build a lemless campaign and hire a media buyer. No, <laughs> it doesn't work like that, man. You need to develop dozens and dozens, you know, 30, 40, maybe even 50 skills. Um, I wouldn't 50 is quite extreme, but it comes down to this. So last but not least, let's call this one operations. The final skill set required is your ability to actually operate your business. Um, once again, I'm gonna miss quite a few skills here because, you know, it's, it's gonna go over my head. But the first thing is hiring. What I would do really is I would say it's hiring alongside management. So you've got hiring, you've got management, and then you've also got, what else? Well, we've got culture, right? Team building really splits into three things like sales. It's your ability to attract and interview and recognize great talent, that's hiring. And then your ability to keep that talent comes into two forms how well you manage them and how great you are at building a good company culture. And this is the hardest thing to learn how to do because you have to start like, in order to be great at hiring management and culture, you have to be, you have to have nailed every single skill on this list. Because if you're hiring someone to do acquisition or retention, in order to like great recognize is great and great can manage great and great can build great culture, right? So hardest skills by far is hiring, right? So aside from that, you've obviously got like accounting, right? Then you've got system building. Um, accounting, I mean, I'm gonna give it like a seven because it's a fucking pain in the ass and a lot of people don't know how to do it. 
System building is a seven as well. System building as a skill is simply just like, how well are you able to see parts of your business as repeatable processes that can be done or performed by somebody else? That's really what it comes down to. Removal, this is a good skill. Your ability to remove stuff from the company that it doesn't need to run. We'll give this a five. You can tell I'm an acquisition guy, right? <laughs> um, I think that's probably mainly what it comes down to. It's like operations is is gonna come down to two things, like your finances and your team. Anyone who's actually into operations is gonna cringe at that because there's, there's probably more to it than actually meets the eye. But if we're looking at this from like sort of a first principles, like what are the core things you really need? I would argue that operations is just made up of building the systems, building the team, making sure the finances are in order and in check. Though that's the sort of trifecta of operations in my opinion. And so that's basically it. One question, one, one thing. If you are like wanting to build an agency and get to 100K a month, um, link in the description. Right, there's a video of me trying to sell you something about basically how I can get you more clients. Check it out if you wanna check it out. I don't care if you check it out or not, but you might find it helpful. It might change your life as it has done for a lot of people, but blah, blah, blah. Besides the point, by all means, look at it if you want to, but that's basically everything to this video. Obviously, I've gotta get a little plug in. Come on, like, give me a break, like a tiny plug. Like, I'm trying, I, I'm here, I wanna make money. Of course I wanna make money, but I also wanna help you. And I hope that by making this video, you are now one step or 10 steps or a hundred steps clearer on what you need to do. Because if you look at your, if you look at building an agency or a coaching business, you just need to look at developing skills. And this is why I don't, I think the whole zero to 10K a month in three months thing is a myth because to develop all these skills takes time. If you're coming into the agency model, and you already have a bunch of skills, then you're naturally gonna be, you're gonna, this is how some people, you know when you see people and they go from like zero to like 20K a month like that? Like we've got some clients who come in and like, um, George Schwartz's example, went from zero, um, zero dollars to like 20K a month in like three months. Client interview um, is, has already been released. But he'd worked for Amazon and he already had sales skills. He already had follow-up skills. He already had data management and emotional management skills. He already knew how to do a bunch of stuff. If you're coming in completely cold, you've got to learn from scratch, which means that it's going to take you longer than somebody else. And this is why I don't like comparing myself to anybody else, because like you might look at other people and be like, oh, that guy, he's like, my, my he's the same age as me. Oh, my agency's doing two grand a month and his is doing 15 grand a month and we've, we've been doing it for the same amount of time. But you don't know how many skills he's developed prior to actually coming on board. So that's just a quick note of skills. I hope this video is useful. Um, subscribe if you're new, because I like it when people subscribe, it strokes my ego. But jokes aside, um, like it if you liked it, comment anything below, and I'll see you in the next one. Love you all, bye.